Hey everyone, I'm Anshul Sharma. I'm a product manager for Microsoft Fabric. Today we are going to talk about in-place data sharing in real time. Here is a demo scenario. We have a financial data provider who is interested in reducing operational inefficiencies with their legacy data delivery channels and wants to make it easier for their end customers to seamlessly access large new data sets in real time. The data provider is hosting a real-time ticker feed along with years of historical data in Azure Data Explorer. The data provider can share this data with multiple data consumers outside their tenant seamlessly. For a data consumer, they can just consume the data feed in Microsoft Fabric KQL database without setting up any complex ETL processes. Data consumer can in fact subscribe to multiple data feeds from different providers and combine it with its own private data set to derive insights. In the following demo, we will start by wearing a data provider hat and share a stock ticker data set with a consumer. Then as a data consumer, we will subscribe to this real-time feed in Fabric, combine it with a private financial data for a company and generate meaningful insights. So let's get started. All right, now I'm wearing a data provider's hat. We are in Azure portal. And as a data provider, I'm posting historical as well real-time stock ticker feed in an ADX database called ticker feed. Now I want to share this data with my consumers. I can simply click on the share option and provide the email address of my consumer and click on share. It generates a link for me, which I can just copy and share it with my consumer for subscribing to this data set in Microsoft Fabric. Please note that you can share your Azure Data Explorer databases today and consume in Microsoft Fabric. Soon you will also be able to share your KQL databases from Fabric with data consumers residing in same or different Fabric tenants. Now I'm switching role as a data consumer. I have the link shared by the data provider. I'm simply going to open it and it redirects me to Microsoft Fabric. I'm shown a dialogue where I can provide name of the artifact. I can also select the workspace where I want to create this database. Filling this details also provides me a uh, nice little information around which data set I am subscribing to and so on. I will click on create and it will create a shortcut to the data providers ADX database, allowing me to subscribe to the real time feed. We have now successfully subscribed to this real time data feed and created this shortcut to the ADX database. I can see that I have a table now, which is called stock steady which includes the daily open and close prices for all the ticker in S&P 500. I can quickly validate this data by running quick queries. Uh, I can see that there are, there are approximately 3.8 million rows in this particular data set. And the data set goes back all the way up to 1983 with the latest feed being of December, 2022. Now, as and when the provider will update the feeds on their side, it would be automatically reflected uh, to us in real time. Now, what I also have in this particular workspace is a company financial database, uh, which includes the quarterly income announcement for all the S&P 500 companies uh, for the last few years. And this is a private data set that exists only within my workspace. So this data set includes interesting information such as the ticker symbol, revenue for that company, uh, when was uh, this announced, uh, like the report was published, uh, net income, and so on. Now, what we are going to do next is combine the uh, ticker feed that we have received along with this private data set that we have to derive some interesting insights. So moving back to my workspace, I have a KQL query set, which includes certain queries. So we are going to start by again, uh, looking at the number of uh, stock feeds that we have in the shared data set, which is 3.8 million. So as the next steps, what we are going to do is calculate the price per earning ratio for Microsoft stock based on the data that we have. So to do that, we are going to query the quarterly income uh, data set that we have and uh, calculate the quarterly EPS. And not just that, we are going to look at the last 12 months trailing EPS by combining uh, the last four quarters quarterly EPS to derive the EPS for Microsoft stock for a specific date. If I run this query, you can see it gives me EPS values on all the dates when Microsoft announced their uh, quarterly income. And this is all querying the private data set that we have. Now, 
let's take it a notch further, right? What we will do is we will combine the CPS calculation with the ticker feed that we have received and make a join on that on ticker name and date columns and just calculate the P, which is a function of the stock price on that particular day divided by the EPS. And if I run this query, what it does is it generate this nice time chart wherein I can visualize the P for Microsoft stock on each of the days when the earnings were announced. And you can see it, I can, I can browse and look at different values over the period. Now, just for fun, what I'm going to do is just uh, look at the income and revenue per quarter. And again, chart it with the stock price and display it in a wise split chart. And you can see we have this three uh, different uh, time series charts, which displays the values of Microsoft stock price, its revenue and its net income over the last few years. Now let's take it a notch further. What if I have some of my data in my data warehouse in Fabric or even in Lake House? Let's say I'm storing my uh, ESG scores or ESG data for this company in a data warehouse or even storing a list of interested companies that I want to analyze in Lake House. How can I combine that data along with the data that is shared with me? So I'm going to move back to my company financials uh, database. And here we are going to create a shortcut by clicking on one lake shortcut. I can select the lake house uh, called company lake house here, which includes a table called companies, which holds the list of interesting companies and the ticker symbol that I'm interested to analyze. Once the shortcut is created, it appears under the shortcut folder. And I can see this uh, Delta table includes two columns, uh, ticker and the name of company. So we've successfully established a shortcut from KQLDB to a Delta table in Lake House. Now let's move back to the KQL query set uh, that we have and try to analyze this data further. So you can see the shortcut is also uh, visible here in the query set. I can just query the shortcut to see what data does it hold. So it includes a few stock ticker names along with the name of companies, four in this particular case. What we are going to do next is query this data from Lake House, get the list of tickers, and then only look at the stock price for this particular tickers over the last few years. Once I run this query, you can see I have four time series charts for each of the ticker that exist in, in, in the shortcut. Um, and I can see the values over the last few years. All right. So just to summarize, we started this demo by wearing a provide data providers hat and shared a real time stock feed with data consumer. On the consumer side, we subscribed to that data feed. We combined it with a private data set that existed in uh, one of my another KQL database and derived insight. Lastly, we created a shortcut to a lake house table and combined it with the data feed that I subscribed to. Now, lastly, if you are interested to share this uh, information with your business uh, stakeholders or create a dashboard out of it, you can just select any of the query and build Power BI report. What it does is it makes the output of that query available uh, in your PBI report. I can just select the fields that I am interested in. And also the type of visualization that I want to create. Yep, you can see we have a nice little area chart here. Now I can just save this report and distribute it for wider consumption. That's all for this demo. Thank you for watching.